do is show you how to graph um, this absolute value function. So there's a couple ways we can learn how to, we can graph this. Um, one way is you know using the table method, which is perfectly fine. I want to kind of show you kind of a little bit of a shortcut though um, that we can remember how to do this. So, and I'll go back and I'll do the table method just to kind of prove to you how it can work. So, first thing I do when I'm going to graph this is I always tell my students s of x. If you just do the absolute value of x, what does that graph look like? Well, let's do a uh, let's do a small graph over here. Remember the absolute value of x. is going to go right there where you're going to, and it's going to contain the point 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. All right? So it contains point negative 1, 1 and it also contains point 1, 1. So next thing I need to look at is what is this negative 2 and this 6 doing to my function? Well, this negative 2, if you remember your transformation, so if you remember s of x equals a times x minus h, plus k, what we need to do is we need to look at, well, what is our k doing? Well, our k, remember, shifts our graph up and down. Positive being up, negative being down. And our h tells us to shift left or right. And actually, there's another one here. We can just, um, I'll just use a p, whatever. And um, our h tells us to shift to left or right. When our h inside of it is negative, that means actually gonna shift it to the right. Um, and if it's, uh, Negative, that means you're going to sh negative shift to the right, positive, you're going to shift it to the left. So it's actually the opposite when it's inside of the function. And then we have a coefficient of x, or you could have your a um, outside of there. And these, what these probably deal with is if you're going to be shrinking or, comp or compressing or stretching your absolute value function. And also your a tells you if it's opening upwards or opening down. So that's something else that's in a different video, but I want to look at this. And since my negative sign is inside of my function, that's going to tell me it's going to reflect uh, the y-axis. So therefore, I'm actually not going to notice any reflections with that negative. And the reason being is, well, one thing you can look at two ways. What's the absolute value of a negative number? It's always positive, right? So it doesn't matter if this is negative or not. The second thing is, this graph is, ref um, is symmetrical about the y-axis. So I'm going to flip it about the y-axis, what it's already symmetrical about. So this really, that negative sign, since it's inside of my function for the absolute value, is not actually going to affect the graph. However, that negative two, or the two, will. And let's look at how it's gonna affect it. So, first thing, let's look at how that k affects it. I told you that's gonna shift it up. So if I wanted to graph this equation, I don't know what this graph looks like. But I do know this is the function absolute value of x. So if I'm doing shifting it up six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I know this graph is going to vertex cross at um, zero comma six. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick a point to the left and pick a point to the right to do it. So let's not make this difficult. Let's just pick negative one and positive one. So what I'll do is s of x, or I'm sorry, s of negative one, equals absolute value negative 2 times negative 1 plus 6. Negative 2 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 2. Absolute value of 2 is obviously 2. 2 plus 6 is 8. So you can see s of negative 1 equals 8. So negative 1 goes up to 8. And then I'll do s of 1 equals negative 2 times times 1, absolute value, plus 6, equals, um, let's see here, this becomes a negative 2, absolute value, geez, what am I doing, plus 6, absolute value of negative 2 is obviously 2, 2 plus 6 is 8. So what you can see is that 2 Looks like it actually kind of shrinks it in a little bit, okay, or it compresses the graph, and it shifts it up six. Now, if you didn't already notice that, or you don't know your transformations, you could have just also randomly picked these points and made a table. You could have made a table like this, and just said, well, x, y, and you just picked negative one, zero, and one. And what you would have gotten is the exact same answers, or shoot, that's eight. Okay? And that's how you graph a uh, absolute value function.